What's up, everybody? Uh, I'm here in, this isn't New Haven, Connecticut, Greg. Not, it's uh, Bethany. Bethany. Bethany, Connecticut. And I'm here with uh, Ashley from Unit 6 Customs. And uh, I wanted to do this interview like I was telling you before, uh, before I came up and made this trip, which thank you so much, by the way, for gracing us with your beautiful home. Uh, it's and, been a pleasure. Uh, it's been uh, nice to have the company. Yeah, yeah it was awesome. Um, this whole area out here is just unbelievable. It's, uh, it's definitely a part of the country that I haven't seen since I was, you know, 15, 16 years old, like I was telling you. And to be back up here, I definitely want to visit more. So uh, thank you again. Uh, we did go to New Haven, which is... It's about 20 minutes south of us okay so it's, it's, it's our newest city yeah Yale University and, and the rest of it so it's yeah but it was good uh, we went to uh, Louis, Louis, Louis lunch which apparently is the America's oldest yeah, oldest burger joint burger joint I don't know what it was about this burger it was just beef on regular bread yeah. toasted yeah incredible no no seasoning not it's just it's just tastes, but it's quality yeah, beef. Yeah, like there's yeah. something about the beef they use. I I, I didn't get it, but <sighs> magic, I guess. I don't know, but uh, that's not what the video is about. We wanted to do a quick little interview. If you're new to the channel, the FXR tour basically is a an event that uh the, the gentleman that sh I shared this YouTube with, Justin Page, and uh, Jace Hudson from Fast Life Garage. They kind of it was like a little brainchild of the both of them. Justin had this idea to to go to Jace with, hey, let's build bikes against each other, and then. Uh, Jace had the idea, well, let's invite others of our friends to do it. And then it turned into, you know, I mean, it just kept, you know, stepping from there. And then it came to be what you guys saw here on the, on the channel. I feel like the first year, obviously there's a lot of learning and, yeah. and things that, the, that goes on with it this year. I don't know if the people watching at home or if the builders or whatever, it was expecting maybe a little bit higher, you know, start of it. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to get Ashley on here to kind of explain to what his experience for the FXR tour was and, um, and then really get the ball rolling on the content for the FXR tour. Because from here on out, I think once born free California kicks off. Yeah, it will, it will kick into gear. That's, that's exactly what happened with that. It was, you know, we all, all of the builders chugged along each week, putting their updates. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then as soon as born free California was out of the way, born free Texas started pushing, yep. you know, pushing us and, and, and promoting and, and really getting on it because, you don't want to lay it all out there too early, right? Exactly. Well, you don't want to get you don't want to get burnt out, but you also no. don't want you guys at home don't want to see ten months of uh, the same bike getting built or whatever. It's it's really exciting to be a part of it, and especially with the YouTube. I, I've learned this with the YouTube world. Um, a lot of these bike builds and, and even car builds. I watch a lot of car videos, and if if someone starts a car project and has it done, I would say in a month's time in the YouTube world, they might have been working on it for months, yeah. but they don't really start they. They strategically put all their content together and drop it, yeah. you know, in a quick window. You really feel like you're you're part of the build, and, and you can kind of. Re it's just like a TV show. Like you're you're yeah. you know what each episode. It's, yeah, and you look forward to the next one. Exactly, but if it's got if it's too spaced out, it's almost like yeah. you, you either lose focus or lose interest or you forget about it, whatever. So uh, in the next months to be, you're going to really start seeing a lot of content from not just the builders, uh, but from us here on our channel. Even though we're not building anything. And uh, Ashley, he's actually, if you see over here in this background, Come even on, though he's, and, and I'm sure he'll talk about this, but he's even... Uninvited builder. Yeah, the uninvited. <laughs> so he's he's doing another build for the FXR tour because he had such a lot of fun. And, and that's why I really wanted to get yeah. you talking about it. Let's start off, you're new to the U.S. Here in August uh, of 22. So, and then the tour started February 23. Mm. So I wasn't even here really for, well, six months I've been here. And then I was straight into building a bike yeah. in, in this garage, in this very garage. Yeah. So, uh, but your, your motorcycle history or your, yeah. your motorcycle, um, ability goes way beyond. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I, so, uh, I did have a shop back home. Um, and I've turned out a lot of custom bikes and that's, that's, that is my thing. I wasn't kind of a service mm. guy. I was, you know, custom, whatever it was. So I didn't come in being a garage builder from the point of I've only ever done that. Yeah. You know, I have been paid for my services, so it's not, you know, I do have a, a, a certain skill level. Well, I think also, for you guys that don't know, go back on to like the history of the FXR Tour. Basically, the FXR Tour is 10 builders, nine of which were picked by kind of Jace and Justin together. Uh, they they looked at the pool of shops, yeah. more, more, more or less shops, and then they did what they call the 10th Garage Builder. So not to discredit you and call you a garage builder, no, no, but, but you were a small shop. You yeah. weren't really uh, producing like FXR Division no. or... 
you know, someone like Ramjet or whatever. A small shop from the UK. Yes. So your shops here just dwarf, mm -hmm. dwarf anything that we've got back home. Yeah. Like we've got some talented, talented builders, but the the stuff you have on hand. Like here, I can find a chroma. Like I don't even know if we've got a chroma in yeah. England anymore. Um, so it's the 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 stuff you have around you and the resources you can pull from. Yeah. What you you were saying last time when we were talking, um, even in the UK, a lot of the Harley dealerships are yeah. kind of shutting down. Yeah, we've lost uh, two two dealerships uh, this year, sort of last year, um, but also stuff like the the stuff that they have. So the dealership I'm at, Old School Harley in Ellington. So we've got uh, a dyno. Mm. You know, which I don't know if any of the dealerships back home have a dyno room. So what do you guys do to, for performance? Do you all it's use? A, it's a screaming, back home, it'll be a screaming eagle. Yeah, just, just a download download tool. Okay. Um, I mean, for me, I used to take my all my bikes to Boz um, Engineering, uh, V-Twin down in Rye, and uh, uh, he's, he's an absolute wizard, you know. Uh, he's, but there's, there's only a couple of guys that have Dino shops that work with Harley's back home okay. that are good. You know, there's Dino shops, but then there's Dino shops that work with Harley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know what you're saying because it is a different. Yeah. You know, obviously yeah. B twin. Your temperatures are different. We talked about that. temperatures yeah. and fuel and everything's a different than a, a liquid cool. Yeah. Even if it's a motorcycle, a liquid cool motorcycle still is tuned differently than a yeah, air cooled. Yeah. So, but yeah, you know, your background did start on Harley's. You actually been in magazines. The yeah. CFXR yeah. behind me. Yeah. Um, so that one uh, was in Cycle Source magazine last. March time, mm -hmm. I think it was. I took it, uh, took it down to uh, Daytona uh, Bike Week, um, and I still had my British plate on it at the time because yeah. it wasn't. I couldn't get it registered. It literally, the, I got the bike in October, and I had a lot of trouble registering it. I got it registered in the end, but uh, I didn't get it done in time to go to Daytona. So I, I just ran it on my UK registration plate, which was quite cool. You built this FXR. You actually built this bike the first time in UK. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so I built that. Uh, Around 2019, I think it was, um, and it's been. I, it was fairly stock, just set up with bars, suspension, and stuff. And I ran it for a bit and and loved it. So then, then I did the SNS 111 and the Baker, but in the stock frame and everything. And then, you know, got it exactly where I wanted it. And then I tore it right down and, and had my mate flaky paint it, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know went through it and, and finished it. So this this one was painted in the UK, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this one was painted here in the States. It was painted here by uh, uh, my friend Aaron Castor. Um, oh yeah. Uh, and then also you were showing me magazines. He, this you know even though we were talking about Cycle Source since he's been here, you've been in American magazine literature yeah, so was, even uh, before that. So talk first edition of Talk magazine, mm -hmm. which was pretty cool with my uh, Scooby Doo bike, as we call it. Um, so that was a 2015 Dyna with RT fair in lowers and fully built motor and, and whatnot and then um, a bike I built for my friend Andrew who came on the tour, yeah, yeah. Brits on tour. Um, I built him a dyno with a 124 and stuff so that was in one of the talk magazines and then uh, back in 2010 I had a uh, Suzuki GS750 you know air cooled uh, hardtail chop yeah. in, in horse magazine which was pretty you know that was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean it's it, the bees it's, just speaking like uh you know as a tattoo background i remember my mentor was actually in some japanese literature so it's, yeah. it's kind of crazy um obviously the language barrier is not quite the same right. as english to japanese but to see his face and his machines and tattoos and it but written in japanese not knowing what they're saying about them yeah. it was just it's kind of cool so i can imagine you know having uh i can only imagine if someone like justin or whatever was printed in a uk magazine how cool it'd yeah, be to, to see his bike yeah. over over on that side of the pond you're nothing new to FXRs, you know, you've been doing it for well over a decade now. Your uh, your first kind of knowledge, because you only were in the States for a few months, your first yep. knowledge of the FXR tour, how did you go about finding out about the tour? And so, so I listened to Jace's podcast, okay. you know, I have done for forever more. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I came down one Sunday morning and they did the video uh, podcast with, it was, I don't know if it was one of the first video ones he done or you know the YouTube podcast with him, Justin and Corey from Main Drive. Mm -hmm. I was sat there, you know, watching this thing and then they started announcing this tour that they were gonna do. Um, the FXR tour. And I thought this sounds pretty interesting because it was kind of taken back to like the biker build off days mm -hmm. and, and and actually something that everyone can get behind in the motorcycling community. Yep. It was, you know, and everyone could be a part of and I was, you know, listening and, and I thought, well, I can do this. This is this is me. It was kind of like 
it was meant to be mm. because the deal was you had to be a garage builder, which I was. This is because this, you can't be more garage right, than this. Um, and you had to start with an FXR frame, which which uh, this came as a frame. I bought it over from the UK mm. um, with the idea of building it for a visitor's bike. So when my dad came over or my kid came over, that we could go ride it. Yep. Um, and I had pretty much everything to build a stock bike, which uh, which is kind of part of the reason why I'm building another one because I've got I've got some bits that I want to. You know, so some of the bits going on this were, yeah, were yeah, what was uh, attention to this? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I, I love building bikes. Yeah, yeah. That's, if it's well, in you, it's in you. We were talking about that, you know, you work at a, not, I wouldn't say local, but you said it's a three hour round trip, yeah, but you yeah. work at a Harley Davidson dealership here in Connecticut. Yeah. And uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's definitely a passion. Bill. So as soon as I heard it, as soon as I heard uh, the podcast go out and then they gave the details of, uh, Justin's email and you know I literally got straight on my phone made a little video came out I'm like look I can do this I've got this frame sat on it was sat on this lift uh, the garage looked the right stakes I then mm. just moved in took a little video of it I'm like look I can do this I let me in on this I'm, I'm your man and sent it to Justin straight yeah. away um, I think Justin did say you were the first yeah like actual entry the, yeah. the I don't remember what the pool of, of people were but uh, for those that don't know, also basically what it is is the nine builders, all the videos, the video yeah. you sent, along with uh, everyone else that was uh, trying to become the the tent builder, uh, they went out to all the builders. So all nine builders, it wasn't, it didn't have to be unanimously, no. but it needed to be a majority of the votes needed to say we want this guy. And obviously your video must have stood out. And well, yeah, I uh, so I did the video, but then because I got a little bit excited and carried away maybe, and then I thought, you know what, I need to do the proper email. So then I punched out. An email and you know put a bit of thought into it because mm -hmm. I wanted to do it like why would I not it well was... and, I, and I think I think what captured a lot of people's attention um, is once you, you put your name out there they could see that you built some serious bikes it yeah. wasn't like you're um, and no offense to, I mean even myself you know this is technically my FXR that's behind the, the camera right now was really my first ground up bike you know right. I so I wouldn't call myself a builder, even if, even after building a bike, I'm, I'm still not a builder. I'm not a fabricator. I, I, it's just a bolt together thing. And there was a few guys in the in the competition or in the running for a garage build that yeah. were like me, and uh, and they felt I don't want to say they felt insulted, but we did get a lot of flack. You know, to 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 be in this group of guys, you really did need to have more than just a, a bolt together bike, yeah. and you showed that, and uh, and obviously this shows. You know, yep. you're capable of more than that. But so you, you did the interview or you, you did your video, you did that. What did it feel like the moment that they actually reached out to you um, and, so, and said that you were. Right. So it was funny because it was the, they did like the, the I forget where Jace was. Jace was at a camp, camp out or something and mm. Justin was somewhere else. Yeah, they were doing a live. Yeah. yeah. So there was like a bit of uh, buffering and, and mm. whatnot. And um, I was watching it on my phone with my earpiece in and, and my daughter and my wife were trying to watch a film and I was sat there. And they were like, are you watching this or not? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they didn't know what I was doing. They knew that I'd applied for this thing, mm. but they didn't know. And um, so, of course, when they said my name, I was like, I was bouncing off the walls. And uh, my, my daughter, I feel bad because my daughter said, I've never heard you swear so much, Dad. I don't know. <laughs> like excitement, <laughs> yeah. Swear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the dog was barking. And yeah, uh, yeah it was. Uh, and then I didn't sleep all that night. Literally didn't sleep. And um, messaged all my mates. like, And all of them straight away were like, Oh, when is it we're coming you know mm. so straight away i had a load of my pals yeah and then and then uh all that day i was just like right what am i going to do what am i going to do and uh and then the more i thought about who was included in it mm. the more it dawned on me like i've got to, you know i've got to pull this thing together and 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 step it up yeah you know? so, so so at what point i guess that was the point where you started realizing like i need to start putting a, a yeah. more of a custom Game yeah. playing together instead of just a bolt together. Yeah. So let's let's go over kind of because I saw this once your name was announced. This thing was still just a bare frame. I yeah. mean, it wasn't like um, and 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 some guys, you know, they they started a project and maybe they needed the the FXR tour TPJ. We're not we're not throwing shade <laughs> on you, but you know, some guys that, some guys had a bike that they were sitting on for a while yeah. and they needed the motivation to to finish it. Yeah. You were the last in the build. Probably the furthest behind because this thing was literally yeah, it, was, it was a frame. It was a frame, and yeah. you're you're in a new area that you you don't know 
you yeah. know, you don't yeah, have a lot of connections. I, and, and, uh, and, and my, so my tooling and stuff as well. So I only had my hand tools really because I'd like to go into it too much, but the power and stuff is different here to what it is mm. back home. So yeah, all the connections. Yeah, yep. so there's no point in me bringing my lathe, my mill, or anything like that because it wouldn't have worked well. Uh, so I had to scramble pretty quick to get some stuff together, which is why, you know, I've got that, that lathe there, which is tiny. Mm. It does what I need it to do. Um, this year I'll upgrade it, but at that point I had to build a bike, get to you know Durango and cover all my costings and buy all these toolings and you know yeah, so yeah. it was like I was and you bought juggling. A, you bought a vehicle. I mean, yeah, you, you literally. I was, I was juggling. Probably spent the most, <laughs> did the most. You know, had the shortest time frame yeah. out of everyone. So you start off with the bare frame. Um, to, to what you see right now, at what point in the build did you finally nail down your... Yeah, so chat mine changed quite a lot. Yeah. Um, so originally I was going to do, like I say, it was going to be kind of a, a you know a friend's bike when mm. it turned up. So I was going to do something skinny, similar to my orange bike, but with a T-Sport, T-Sport fairing, mm. twin cam. Um, but I was probably going to keep the original oil bag, you know, block off plate. So nothing to, you mm. know, carburetor. out um, so nothing too fancy, but uh, as soon as I got a nod to be included in this thing, it was like, right, now I can show the world yeah. what I can do. I think this bike is probably definitely one of the most understated bikes of the build, just because uh, there was things that I still didn't even notice about. I mean, it's a, it's a dual brake caliber and it's a or rear brake caliber. Um, there's a bunch of other like little kind of fancy bits and pieces that you did that... Uh, that really stand out on this bike, and it's not until you actually get to see these things in person. Yeah, that and, you... and even or, or see it next to a stock FX on mm -hmm. because that's that's the thing. That, I mean, Corey does this great, where he'll he'll build <clears throat> an amazing bike, but Joe Public will just walk straight past it because it's it's too good. Yep. it's too factory. You know, if it wasn't for the paint on this, it's kind of it is kind of like that. Yeah, if I'm well. Corey, Corey makes it kind of his goal to use as many factory genuine yeah. Harley parts. So a lot of his stuff on the bike is, is from a soft tail line or a bagger yeah. line. And it's a it's a challenge in its own oh, yeah. to, to, to incorporate that. I mean, I, I saw the the step-by-step -step where he made his uh, uh, heel toe shifter. Yeah. Uh, or is, is it heel toe or just a toe? But it's still like multiple pieces yeah. to work with factory floorboards. And his foot controls, so he'll use like the Dyna mountain base and then he'll use the Sportster. Arm, lift, yeah, and then it will use the bag of floorboard. Yep, yep. You know? So it just all that kind of stuff is is uh, truly amazing, and like I said, it's definitely a, a harder uh, people don't understand like the amount of work that goes into yeah. that. But at what part? So you you were announced in February of 2023. Yeah, end, end of end of February. At, end, of end of February, February, and the event was October. You we had to be in Durango the 16th or 17th of yeah. October, something something like that. So you needed to leave so here. I, yeah, I. I forget what it was now, but it was crazy. I left here, if we got to Durango on the, what day did we leave, the Monday? So we I don't left, know what day you guys have. We left on Friday. So we left on a Friday. We left the Wednesday. To make it down to Texas to pick up Jetty. And then we were in Durango Saturday evening. Yeah, so we, I think we left you, Yeah, you came in a Saturday, the same time that we came in. Yeah, we left, I think we left Wednesday. Okay. And uh, I didn't get the paint for this bike until the Friday. Before I left. Yeah. So from Friday to Wednesday, that was me. I, I had the frame. I had the frame, yeah. and I got everything in the frame. But obviously, you know the the, the fuel tank, and I'd run it because I've got. Yeah, a, I remember you had a bladder. Yeah. I, I remember that video yeah, of it running. So I'd run it and stuff, but um, I I literally got to ride it once around the block. You know, and that was then it had to go. We had to go. Mm -hmm. We had to leave because we had two thousand three hundred miles. Yeah. Before we even got to. Before, yeah, before we, and you guys kind of took a longer route. I was looking yeah. at, Justin showed me a screenshot of the route that you guys were going to take, and y'all wanted to go down and around and then kind of back up yeah. in Minnesota, and yeah. so y'all kind of. It's, it's a road trip for us. Though, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, you know my, my, my son and my best mate coming over, mm. um, and I didn't want to just stick them in the truck. But, yeah. You know, so we, we tried to make it a little bit scenic. A lot of your updates are still on your page. Yeah. So you can always go back to the FXR tour hashtag, uh, FXR Friday updates and stuff like that, and see this bike in, in its stages. But yeah, I saw it, you know, right before the tour, which it kind of worked out better that way because you were able to unveil the paint yeah. 
at the event yeah. and uh we didn't even see it justin i think you sent him a couple little pictures yeah. and not even like of the whole bike and uh, all the builders are actually listed on the uh, side of the fairing here, and there's a couple other like little stabs at what was going on during the tour. Some of the jokes that were like the inside jokes. Um, so if you guys see something written on this bike and you don't understand what it is, yeah. it, it's it's, an, it's kind of an in joke. Yeah, it's right, an it's an inside out. joke. Yeah. But so uh, you're building the bike. Obviously, with the FXR tour, there's a there's a group chat, and all the builders are in this group chat. And uh, to you. And to Justin and to a lot of the builders, I think you guys all kind of agree that was the best part of the build was yeah. the group chat. It was it was uh, as good as it was as good as the ride. You yeah. Know? Which which when you build a bike, that that ride is the it's amazing. It's supposed to be the it's, pinnacle of the yeah, build. It's yes. Amazing. But uh, especially for me, you know, I didn't know any of these guys, um, but they never treated me like they didn't mm. know me. They you know brought me in right from the off and uh, accepted me. You know. I think TPJ was a little bit reluctant to start with. But then, I think that's just the way he is with everyone, though. Yeah, but then he came around and he's uh, yeah. Yeah, he, he loves me now. But you know, um, well, love's a strong word to use with him. <laughs> I, but we'll, we'll see. He's yeah. he's going to be on the tour again, so I hope what he you, sees this. And what did he say to you yesterday? Give him a smack for. Yeah, he wanted me to, and I, I did. I, I smacked that. him. I gave him a not a hard smack, but um, but yeah. So you guys had the group chat and and watching all the builds go down and. and Really, like I said, right after Born Free Texas, I even know with Justin, if you watch our channel, if you go back to the, uh, F the MA FXR build, it was really end of June into July where everybody yeah. started really cranking it into gear yeah. um, and, and getting some real work done. I know Justin, we prepped the frame, we had everything ready and mocked up in there for the motor and all around February, March, and then probably went almost three months without even touching it. Yeah. Uh, it was, that was kind of like the accumulation of parts time. Mm -hmm. you know, that was where you... Uh, for me, that was where I was kind of nailing down my direction and what I was going to do. Because I, for me, it's important that you start and finish with the same goal in mind. It can deviate a little bit, yeah. but it gets real expensive if you get halfway into it. Yeah, yeah. And totally change direction. That's, you can't, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's that parts gathering time. So mm. it was hard to update sometimes because it was just like, this is a part I got. And you didn't want to come across as, this is a part I've got and totally shouting out the companies like you know yeah, you, you yeah. want to you want to say thanks to them because but all of this stuff we paid for yeah, yeah. You know, no one got really given anything it i mean there was a few there's a few yeah. uh people that did reach out and and, and uh work with other people but yeah, a, they, yeah, a people. lot of this it wasn't like uh the fxr tour was a big sponsor bill like this was self-funded yep. you know for all of us yep. you know even even though like fxr division they're a business paul's he's a business <clears throat> Excuse me, you know Justin and mm. you know, like Justin's raw material. Yep, it costs money. Yeah, everything costs money. Yeah, Jace's paint costs money. Yep, you know so. And not the the drag this out. Like I said, you can go back to uh, Unit Six Customs Instagram and and see this bike actually getting built. Um, let's get towards the end of the build when everyone starts stressing. Everybody's in the group chat. You know, where are you at on your bike? Where are you yeah. at on your bike? I know you were telling me uh, you wanted to be the first to start your yeah. bike and Justin, like so yeah, I think he started his and. Uh, whatever day and, and posted it yeah. like our mind was literally the next day I think we were we were <clears throat> about almost two weeks out yeah. from the deadline because Justin was able to put about a week's worth of riding around our yeah. area before we loaded up so we're about two weeks out now and you, you look at it on a grand scheme of things and you're like oh I got ten months to build this bike or in your case nine months to build yeah. this bike and Man, that's plenty. It's just an FXR, but then everybody, every single bike was literally down to the yeah, wire, and wire, yeah. to the point where, unfortunately, uh, one of the builders was unable. You know, yeah. Paul had probably the craziest built bike and ran into a substantial amount yeah. of problems. So, um, so you get the bike started, everything's going good. Uh, I guess let's go. Uh, other than the stresses of the paint, yeah, paint got delivered. All that success. Your road trip to Colorado because we're we're all the way over on the East Coast right now, yeah. and you're basically going almost all the way to the West Coast. How did that ride go? And then what got? We'll get into the Brit. Is it Brits a tour or Brits a board? Brits a board. Okay, a board. Brits a board. Yeah. Um, I always kept saying on tour, but yeah. I think Andrew or Dave, one of the two, correct me. They're like, it's a board. And I'm like, yeah. a tour on tour, you know? Yeah, but Brits a board is like a. Like when you're younger and all the lads go on holiday, that's kind of on vacation. Okay. You know, you go off to Spain or wherever. Yeah. It's, it's British abroad. You know? Okay, that makes sense now. Perfect. 
So I'll, I'll fix the hashtags on all, all the hashtags that I commented them in. But um, So you guys make it across the country, and, you're, and your lads, mates, uh, they ended up riding bikes in Denver. Denver. So they yeah. flew into Denver. And got, they rode down to Colorado to obviously meet up with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Colorado Springs, uh, or uh, Durango's towards this, if you don't know geography, it's about a four-hour ride, yeah. three to four-hour ride from yeah. Denver to um Durango, but I'm pretty sure they enjoy the ride. It's a beautiful. Yeah, they said it was cold. Well, it was cold. <laughs> and yes. And Andrew was a bit of a princess. Yeah. And he was, uh, yeah, he was quite. And Dave had cold. just the old school bobber yeah. style helmet on, and yeah. I remember he just had like the little bandana yeah, and a that's helmet. And that's how he rides. I mean, he's he's upgraded now. He's got Simpson. He, oh, does uh, he? Yeah, he got Simpson actually at Born Free. Okay. Because they had the the, the truck deal. Like, yeah, yeah. So he uh, he was having an iron, and I'm like, just buy it. You've had that helmet. Since she was a kid, probably. Yeah, it looked it looked like it had some age <laughs> yeah. on it. It yeah. don't look like it would do much in protection no. if, he did, if he ever did go down. No. Um, so you guys you truck across the country. Did y'all have any issues? Uh, so no, we uh, it was pretty uneventful. The actual the actual driving mm. part of it. Um, uh, we we slept. I think we got six hours sleep total. Um, we stopped for a couple of hours in a U-Haul parking lot to just you know we had to sleep yeah and then uh the following we stopped for four hours in like a truck stop um and what the stupid thing it was our mistake it's like i hadn't seen my mate for a little while so and we were splitting the driving just between the two of us mm. and i drove the first six or seven hundred miles and we just chatted the whole time like for that whole and then of course when we swapped like, he hadn't been sleeping so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know you're supposed to Drive and sleep, swap, drive and sleep, but yeah, so and, it, was, it was hard. And like we were talking about on the trip itself, in the UK, I mean, that first leg of the drive was all you would do in the yeah. UK to go one it, side well, or the other. So, well, it's, it's, I spoke about it with, with Jace, like, uh, from top to bottom is, is if, you, if you ride it, it's 600 miles from the bottom of England to the top of Scotland. If you go in a straight line, it's 500 miles. Well... I went 2,300 miles mm. from here to Durango. Just to Durango. Yeah. So you did you you did basically four trips. Yeah. Back and forth. Yeah. In uh, in the UK, you guys get to you get to Durango. I remember you guys pulling in and and getting the bike unloaded. So I guess for those that don't know, this is where kind of the fun ex the fun started because you're yeah. already lack of sleep, like yeah. you just said. Uh, you go to unload the bike, and I remember the orange bike. The orange bike. The battery. Orange bike. So I'd I'd gone through the orange bike during the week and uh, it was fine been out riding it was fine um, and I think I must have taken it off the tender in the week and I don't know if the cold weather on the drive down mm. killed the battery or what but I got it off it totally totally dead like totally dead and I knew it was I knew that I knew what it was straight away but obviously we had a few a few of us around it and it's mm. like I'll oh, try this try that and all got a bit you know overwhelming and stuff and then uh, I sort of like Step, not step back from it, but when I had a bit of quiet time, I thought about it, and, and I just thought, you know, I know what it is. I'm mm. just it's the battery. Yeah. And then you said about O'Reilly's being, because then I was like, if I was at home, me to get a battery for that, it's a pain in the ass. Mm. You've got to go to a Harley dealership or order one online. So then you wait. But here, you just no, just go to a, what, yeah. Any auto parts store pretty much yeah. has a motorcycle uh, battery, and it's a not a bad battery. They no. they they work. Yeah. And the the uh, the guy, I took my battery with me just to get him to check it and he was like yeah this is well dead mm. it's like yeah because i remember you guys tried jumping it you even tried jumping yeah. it with the, with the, truck, with the yeah. 12 volt system yeah. uh or a car battery and it still wouldn't uh -huh. fire off so uh we get the battery swapped out on that you get this bike out of the trailer y'all went for a ride this was you? good we went up to me and my son went up to uh silverton or silvertown mm -hmm. yeah. silverton. so we went all the way up and uh that was great that was brilliant um and for me to ride with my some. In the U.S. In the U.S. Yep. Yes. In beautiful Colorado, yeah. because Colorado, yeah. Utah, that's probably some of the best American, yeah. you know, scenery and, you're going to see. And do you know what else was 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 great? It gave me goosebumps. Is as we were riding up the hill, um, Paul, Mikey, oh, they were and coming. Sam were riding down yep. the hill. You know, so to see all those all those bikes, custom bikes, you know, on the move yep. as we're going up. That's awesome. Yeah, it's great. Um, great, and it was fine. It was absolutely fine. Um, and then uh, we did a bit more just around town, jumped, uh, bumped into Hans uh, and Joe Kidd mm -hmm. and all his boys. Um, that was, you know, 
good bit of chat and stuff because I hadn't met him before and well Joe I had briefly but uh, and then we got back to the hotel and it was I think that night we were going to uh, the Rango Harley. Harley. I do remember you pulling up and you were complaining about it. Yeah so I, I, I pulled in and uh, into the parking lot and uh, went to blip the throttle and there was nothing and I thought oh, that's, I didn't really think too much of it um, so I cut the bike and, and uh, started it back up it was fine it was there. You know, because it's a, you know, so it's it's injection. It's, it's mm. got the Fundamax and the Nams Nams kit. So, you know, it was a new thing at the time. Um, and I just thought, oh, perhaps it's it's just a software or, a, you know, just a, a, a blip. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then it was fine riding down to the dealership um, until I went to back my bike in into the lineup. And again, I you know blipped the throttle and there was nothing. Mm. And I thought, okay, that's that's twice now. Yeah. In, in not not too far um, and I had to adjust the chain up on it so I took it into the service bay um, and it wouldn't do it so it wouldn't it wouldn't go um, and, the, and a couple of the techs there were there and, and we were chatting and stuff and they said oh it might you know it could just be uh, one point of the throttles not too good on the sensor yeah. um, didn't think anything of it until I went to pull out and it did it again I was like well and not only that but I think they did you did like unplug your yeah. So then when we got back to the hotel, well, this is where the boys come in, like uh, Justin from FXR Division mm. and Mikey. Like yeah, I think Justin have, had the laptop yeah, with him, and like so just to have those guys around you, it, it only makes you better. Mm. You know, you just just learn. And and everyone had gone out, and then I'm getting a text message from Paul saying that Justin's coming back with his computer, so you can plug the Fundamax in, and you know, Mikey's Mikey's going to help you out. So you know, these boys are giving up their night out. To come and help someone that, and it was cold. Yeah, I remember we were sitting when we were sitting under yeah. that little on, and I remember yeah. Mikey. I don't yeah. know how he was even typing on that thing because my hands were freezing. I had gloves on. Yeah, and that's another thing with this FXR tour. I think um, to give it credit, you know, you, you you build a lot of bonds to these group chats and, and watching everyone's builds. But then when you finally get together, it's not a competition. I meant to, I should have said that earlier. Yeah. There's no trophies. There's no awards to be won. The award is getting together with everyone, showing off your bikes, and then doing the ride. You know, the, the, it's, again, not com not a competition, but the good thing about the group chat was, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd put something up, or like Clem would put something up, and you'd think, yeah, that's great. Mm. When he when he put up, um, he sent us a little picture of all his oil lines and stuff, how he'd mounted them to the to the pan and that, and you look at it, you think, yeah, well done, mate, that's, yep. that's you're doing a cracking job. And, that, and that's another one of those things you'll never see, because it's so tucked in, yeah. the way that bike's built. I mean, it's a Bonneville salt flat racer, yeah. so it's it, everything's supposed to be very tight and, and and have no room for error yeah. because you're he's trying to run that bike i think he said the speeds he's trying to ride that bike at this year it's like 100 and i think the record in the class he's in is like 183 right i think I, don't quote me on that if i'm if i'm wrong brian definitely uh you know correct me in the comments but i think he was saying it was like 183 miles an hour for the na cubic inch yeah. harley record that he was trying to uh to beat with that bike and you know godspeed i hope he does it was that bike yeah, so. a piece of it's, art and i know he's excited to do it yeah. so it's a it's, it's one of those bikes that when you get walking around it, it's just so much cool little detail. I would be afraid um, to ride that thing on the salt. Yeah. Because that, if anyone it's, knows it's, anything about the salt flats, it ruins yeah. everything. Yeah. And uh, you're going to be picking salt out of that thing. It, it just rusts. I mean, cars and, and different things that, that are Bonfield salt flat racers, they don't have a long life because they, they do get really yeah. eaten yeah, with no. the... Yep, so. We're back at the hotel. Everybody's kind of uh, helping you out with the bike and... and were you guys able to figure out at that point what was wrong? Yeah, or? so, so uh, Justin got a load of codes up and stuff, and they were trying to read the throttle position and stuff, and it wasn't, it wasn't giving out mm. the right readings and, and, and stuff. And so it was, a, it was a bad twist grip sensor. Okay. That's what it came down to. Um, and obviously, at this time, it was like midnight, so mm. we weren't going to find one at that time. Um, I did ask at Durango when we were there if they had one that I could take in case it was that because we didn't know at that point whether it was or not but they didn't have any um, when we got on the road the next day so I skipped a bit so we put this in the trailer in the end and I rode the orange bike mm. which my son was pissed about because yeah. he was meant to be yeah it was supposed <laughs> to be a thousand mile trip you yeah. and your son side by side yeah. FXRs and uh, luckily you, you brought a second bike yeah. so you were able to still complete the, the tour on a bike, you know, I mean, yeah. same thing that Paul did, you know, even though he wasn't on his purpose-built tour bike, he was actually still on an FXR for the tour, yeah. 
and uh, hats off to him. I mean, he still rolled the entire length on a chopper, yeah. no windscreen. Fast. And he was well. riding fast. Fast. And he's a giant, so yeah. he's he's a big brick in the wind. He ain't he's not no, no. little streamlined guy like me. Uh, him he's, and Mikey. Yep. So. Yeah, Mikey. Mikey's a big boy too. Yeah. yeah. So you guys trailer this thing up, or you load it up, you trailer, you get on this bike. We were able to source parts for this. Yep, in uh, Amar Amarillo. Yep. Yeah, so I've got a twist grip sensor in Amarillo. Um, but again, it was, we'd got to the dealership real late. Um, I forget what time we were meant to be there, but everyone rolled in a little bit, because it was a long day. We were, first. we got there at seven. It was just as the yeah. sun, because I, I made the phone call to them. So um, for anyone that was waiting at Amarillo for us, and I, I've said this in the video, um, we, when we, when we were doing the math, we didn't a lot for, it was only a, it was actually a 500 mile day, which is a lot, but it was all winding roads. So some yeah. of those roads, the, the speed limit was 35, 40 yeah. miles an hour. And, uh, and then we lost an hour. The time zone changed forward an hour when we got into yeah. Texas. Uh, so what would have been six o'clock Colorado time turned into seven o'clock when we actually arrived and we were supposed to be there at five. We were supposed to be there just as the dealership was closing wow. down. So they, and Man, hats off to Amarillo. I said it before. They put on for us. They had yeah, the, the food, and food spread was, and a a good, uh, live music. Yeah. Uh, and we felt bad that we were arriving late. Uh, but there were still a lot of people there, and they were they were more than happy to see the bikes rolling in. But they had the part, and yeah. they still sold it to you after hours. Yeah. And, uh, um, and it was, I know Corey had said, so, right, we, are we going to do this in the parking lot? And I was like, do you know, deep down, yeah, I, I want to. Of mm. course I want to, because I want to ride the bike that I spent all this time building. But in the same breath, I didn't want to take that fair enough and everything laid out on the parking lot floor yeah. at midnight, trying to trying to put it together. Mm -hmm. So, so we rode the orange bike again from Amarillo to Dallas, um, and then I pulled it out at Dallas, put it in at Strokers, so that you know it was there for. Mm. The, and it the didn't limp it. Did you have to push it in or did it? No, it, it went. Yeah, it, it went under. Went. So it was an intermittent problem, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. So for those of you that don't know, uh, it's like a real stat style. Yeah. It's got a, a, a different ohm yeah. reading, and sometimes there could be corrosion so it, or you know something where it's not actually getting full signal, and then it'll pop signal here, yeah. you know, just like a thermostat for your house. Um, so it was an intermittent problem, and uh, it wasn't worth because I think you even said – you had this much thought of actually still trying to ride from yeah. Colorado on this bike because you you found a little sweet spot yeah. where it worked 100% of the time. Yeah, but but it's that time you come to a, a stop yeah. and you've got all these guys behind you because that's the thing is is it wasn't just the 10, 10 guys. Yeah, you know, we had 10 a, guys and then... Yeah, everyone had, everyone had their entourage yeah. and then by the time we got to Texas, we picked up more riders and by the time we got to Dallas, we picked yeah. up even more riders. I mean, and, uh, FXR division. What a show. They had that, like those boys between ten to fifteen guys yeah. at least. Um, I remember when we were in Durango. They they filled the parking lot up. They, it was incredible. Uh, I know Joe Kid wasn't really. They kind of did their own yeah. FXR tour, but they but still they had still, a large presence. Yeah, and then yeah. when we got to uh, Jason's shop, from Jason's shop to uh, Born Free Texas, they did ride with us. And I remember being in the truck. I took that video of seeing nearly i mean not all of them are fxrs obviously but there was uh, a good 70 80 bikes yeah. it had to be when we left jason's yeah. shop it had to be a, i would put money on it at yeah. least 60 to 70 motorcycles yeah. and it looked so good going down the road knowing that over half of them were fxrs yeah. and uh nick from new hampshire that's been a nomad riding all over the country he was yeah, part yeah, of it boy, yeah well we uh did we catch him on we caught him in colorado yeah so he when, when we pulled out, he was trying to meet us at Harley Davidson. We left Durango Harley a little early because we were trying to get on the road to make up the, the distance. Yeah. And he was pulling into the Harley or he's pulling into Durango at the time we were supposed to still be at the dealership. So he turned around, took off, caught the group. And then he had a uh, fueling issues one time and he had another little issue. And I caught him on the side yeah. of the road and see if he, he needed any assistance. He's a good guy. I don't know what his, sorry, Nick, but I don't know what his Instagram handle is, but he's a good guy. It's his name, follow. Nicholas. Yeah, yeah, Nicholas he's, Roselli. He's a good guy to follow because yep. he he's he goes everywhere. He was kind of quiet. You yep. know what I mean, he's not a he's. I don't think he drinks or nothing like that. So he's not a big partier, but he still was pretty much yeah. there with us anywhere we were at. So I think he said he's been on the road at that point for like eight years, eight or nine years. Yeah. So I was like, well, where do you stay? Because I'm from New Hampshire, and his license plate was so mangled up from just like tying yeah. off bungees yeah. to it and everything. So we we. Uh... So we got the part, and uh, Jace. Obviously, we were meeting at Jace's on the last, the last mm. day of the ride, 
Um, and he, uh, uh, Matt, has Matt, mm. uh, opened up his shop for me so I could get in there yep. early. So we got in there like six o'clock a.m. so that we could get it rattled out and, and do it tidy. Yep. And that's what I did. I've, you know, I've not touched it since. New twist grip sensor. It's fired up, everything's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect, runs like a drink. Yeah, because yeah. I remember when we got there, by the time we showed up, me and uh, Sax, um, and we recorded you a little bit, it was, uh, y'all had the fairing off, you were getting ready to put it back on. Yeah. You, yeah, all the wiring was cleaned back up, you were testing it, 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 it revved just fine, yeah. everything seemed good, and y'all were confident thing, to... Yeah, and the, and the thing was, it's, it's, you know, when when I built it, I built it so that it was a good looking show bike kind of yeah. you know rather than so one little thing like i spoke to chris from fx i division he said oh you've done the same thing so when i've when i've mounted the fairing i've put the the uh, bolts through from the face mm. and the nuts are on the back so to to get it all off you have to take everything yeah to get everything to it, yeah. off yeah everything's got to come off and it's and, and the you know i'm running full hand control so i've got all my turn signals mm. everything so i've got a lot of stuff going through my bars um, and uh, you know the twist grip sensor has got those two, two, uh, two lots different of wires. Yeah. yeah. So it's quite a lot to pull back through. Mm. Um, and I didn't want to, you know, if we'd have, if we'd have done it at the hotel, I don't think I'd have been riding it. I think I'd have. There's so many things that could have just gone wrong. Yeah. Um, but you know, doing it in Jace's Jace's shop with with proper tools. So yeah. So we, we make it from Amarillo. Uh, we go from Amarillo to Dallas. We, we go to the Strokers and, yeah. and you brought the bike in the Strokers. Strokers was a very good turnout. Um, it was also not just a FXR tour party, but it was kind of like the pre-party for yeah. the entire Born Free. So there was a large group of bikes. Oh, it's heaving. Yeah. Yeah. Was, I've been was... to Strokers a couple times. Jason's taken me and uh, that was insane to see that many bikes. And you know, the parking lot for anyone who's ever been there, it, it wraps around and yeah. goes down. And there was uh, at one point when we were doing the knives, when, or not we, like I was in it, but when Justin and Jace were handing out the knives, that large group of, I think they were yeah. uh, a motorcycle club, they come rolling in, and it just seemed like that parade went on for yeah. a good two or three minutes. I had to cut the camera off. I was like, I, I don't have enough memory yeah. space to, to watch this entire parade come through. So, uh, Sogers was a good time, and I, and I think that's another thing, you know, with, with the FXR tour, all these stops were just, every stop was... Uh, it wasn't like you just show up to a hotel and you're hanging out. It was it was set up and designed yeah. that every stop was almost like its own event. Um, they were put on. We had Durango Harley, uh, Amarillo Harley, which is a uh, Trips Harley Davidson, uh, Strokers, and Cowboy Harley were all sponsors of the tour, and they really opened their doors yeah. and and had each. And, uh, and were really helpful. Yeah, like, really helpful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, they gave everyone shop space that yeah, they needed it. Yeah. Or Sunday, I, I take it back. Sundays when we did the the bikes that evening. Yeah. Uh, they brought a salesperson in, so anyone that wanted to buy a T-shirt or a part yeah, or whatever. Off on hand, didn't and then they had the service. They had one service guy there. They opened up the service bay, yeah. so if anybody needed, like you said, you had to go in there and and, and tinker with yours a little bit. Um, but they let everybody use that. So hats off to all the dealerships for not just uh, um, not just wanting their name on the flyer, but actually yeah, giving something back. Yeah, giving something back. So sorry we had a little camera di technical difficulties. Um, I think we were talking about the dealerships leaning into yeah. it. And uh, you were wanting to say... Yeah, so uh, you touched on like it wasn't just a load of guys hanging out in the parking lot. And what I wanted to say was there was a, you know, it wasn't just that, but there was a lot of that, mm. which was another, you know, great... Met, I got to meet Dennis Punt, yep. you know, this year's builder. Yep, one of this year's um, builder. Because he came along for the ride with his, like, near-perfect 120R. It was almost two point. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful we, bike. We, when me and Justin saw it in the parking lot, we joked, we're like, man, we're we're glad he's not in this competition because yeah. he's making everyone look bad. He's just showing <laughs> up on a, his daily ride. Yeah. So, so yeah, so there, you know, and and the the community really did lean into it. I think, mm. um, you know, I got to meet like Hans, I said earlier, but then uh, I think Trap House Pipeline or something. Yeah, yeah, he Willie, was there. Yeah. I met him at uh, uh, one of the stops. Yeah, so I track. I, I still chat to him quite regularly yep. and stuff, and 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 you know, so many people. Chuck was there, which he's a builder yeah. this year. He was in Durango and stopped by and, and saw everybody. Um, I'm trying to remember who else. Well, There's Chris, any... uh, Chris from um, Saddle. Who's yeah, Chris was year. just a rider last year. He's a builder yeah. this year. A lot of the guys that did ride on the tour, even Joe Kidd rode on the tour yeah. last year, which I'm going to talk to Joe while we're on this trip. I'm going to try to get yeah. Joe back on it. Joe's got a pretty cool idea. Um, it's yeah. a little different. Um, and I think... It's another one of those bikes that's been in his head and he needs the reason to build it. Yeah. Because right now he's just kind of building 
and there's no offense to the bikes he's building, but he's just building the same kind of bike. Yeah, of course. Cool. So and he's got his formula. Yeah, he's got his formula exactly, and uh, and he builds them, he rides them, and he sells them, and, and that's how he does his. I don't even know if that's his full time hustle or just a side hustle. I mean, whatever it is. Whatever it is, it yeah, works for him. Yeah. So it's um, but a lot of the builders for this year's tour were guys that actually came on last year's tour, um, and then the friendships were were so yeah. good that this person picked that person based on the fact that like. That guy was on the tour. They enjoyed yes. what they had. Well, that was one of the big things that uh, Justin and Jace both said is that, you know, this is this is the ten builders for this year. You know, there's people said, oh, you should have had this person. You should have had that person. It's like, well, show up. Mm -hmm. You know, show up. That's the yeah. best thing you can do is show up to the first one, and then it puts you in a better spot yep. for the second one. And look what it has done. Look at uh, Dave. You know, the garage builder for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he that's is. another guy that yeah. was on the tour. So that geezer um, is because all the builders, like I said, and no offense to any other the garage builders that did put in. We're not saying that he got picked because he was on the tour, but it definitely helped his case yeah. because everybody knew what he was capable of. Um, it's a it's a huge commitment to say yes, I'm going to build a bike. Yes, I'm going to take off over a week's worth of yeah. time off your work, depending on where you live in the country, and. Um, like you said, it's self-funded, so there's money involved, there's time off, because most of these guys, especially the garage builders, are, they have their own lives yeah, and families. Course. And then um, you got to ride. you yeah. you, you got to actually ride these motorcycles, so not only do you have to build a good-looking show bike, but you need to ride it. And um, and that was one of the bits that I not struggled with, mm -hmm. but but uh, I had a, a crazy... We, we all did. I mean, if you look at uh, Jace's last couple of weeks, getting his bike finished, mm. you know, all the stuff Clem went through, getting yep. the bike finished, Paul, yep. you know, but I had a crazy few weeks coming up to it, and then I had that big long drive, and it's kind of like, uh, when we got to Durango, all that adrenaline just came crashing out of me, yeah. and then it was like, right, now you've got to ride a thousand miles with guys that sit at 100 to 120, mm -hmm. you know, on closed circuits, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we, we always say in the U.S. We just say in Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when yeah. we when we drag race illegally yeah. or we're doing stunts, it's it's done in Mexico. Yeah. It's never it's, done East Coasting. I know they're out of Connecticut, New Haven, yeah, but they when they're doing all their stuff, they're down in Mexico. Yeah, they, yeah. they 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 don't wheelie around no, these parts. No. I've never seen them around. This no, place, no, they ever. they're way they respect the law. So, uh, but yeah, so so it was I had a you know I had a big adrenaline crash and then trying to hustle to get my bike sorted out because of the issues I had. And the riding, mm. and you know, I was functioning on like four hours sleep, to, and it was it was crazy. But it was it was great, you know, because at no point did I want to. I'm not one to uh, step out. If I've if I've committed to something, mm. I'm doing it. That's it for myself. But with all the the way the group chat and everything worked out and everything else, it's like you didn't want to let anyone else down. Yep. I didn't want to let down, you know, Jason, Justin that put on this amazing thing that I got to be a part of, you know. Brian, both of them, you know, all gone through their struggles to get their bikes there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, big Chris and Justin, all these boys, you know, Paul, all the things they'd gone through. I didn't want to just turn around and say, oh, do you know what? My throttle don't work, so yeah. sorry, boys. I'm not. That's well, not me. But <laughs> luckily in your case, yeah. you had the second bike. But like I said, and that's, this is no lie, you were, I mean, I, it was almost like we had to force you off this thing and put it in the trailer because yeah, yeah, you were it. sitting on it. I remember you sitting on it, you geared up, and you're like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to yeah. make this work. And yeah. and I think it was probably your mate or maybe it was uh, Dave and Andrew, and they were just like, man, you got another bike. Yeah. Let's find this source parts That's, and all yeah, that. But yeah. it, And it goes back to the, you put all this time and this effort into it, and you, you wanted to show up, and, and you yeah. wanted to, to feel like you completed something. It's like uh, the closest analogy I can make for it is, is that whole – me building the bike and then getting to Durango, that was like training and then making weight to mm. fight. You know, that was that bit. And then the ride is the fight, mm. you know. So it's, it was the same sort of feeling. It was the same sort of like, you, you're working, working, working to get to this one thing. <clears throat> you cut all this weight so that you can then fight. But obviously by cutting weight, it has, you know, it takes Disrupted. a toll on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and so you've got this big peak of, yes, I've made weight. And then you think, right, fuck, now I've got to fight. Yeah, so in 24 got, hours, I got to. Now I've got to get up again. Yep. And that was kind of how I was feeling with the, you know, we got all the way to Durango and it was like, yes, I've made it. 
He's like, no, now I've got yeah. a ride. I'm now not even, I'm still not even close. I'm still, yeah. I got 25 minutes ahead of me or whatever, you know, your rounds were. Yeah. I guess we'll kind of, let's fast forward a little bit. So, you know, you had the struggles. Everybody had their struggles. Everybody worked together as a team. Yeah. Um, we get to Jace's shop. Um, I think that's when the largest group of guys finally got together. Yeah. Y'all did that. It was actually a really nice ride from Waxahachie yeah, to Yellow really Rose. Nice. And I think that's when, because that's that last stretch. And I, I want to say that stretch is only like a hundred and... It was short. It was the shortest. Yeah, it was like a hundred and something miles. But man, because I, like I said, I was in a truck, unfortunately. Um, I could just, I could see through the helmets. Everybody's smiling. Just yeah. everybody riding well, handlebar the, to handlebar. That was the first time that all 10 of us had got... Cause, all. Yeah, all together for, for a full... For a full stretch yep. of ride, um, and to see that many custom bikes at such a good level, you know, built at such a good yep. level, going down the road, going down the road together, it's that's awesome. Else. I that's I sorry. enjoyed it, um, and then you know, arriving into the Born Free, and you know, just going through and yeah. that know. last little stretch as you come into Born Free is great because you got the, the tree canopy. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little yeah. winding, and yeah, it's. Uh, and then your son was able to be on this <laughs> yes. that last stretch. Yeah, so you yeah, finally yeah. did get a ride yeah. some miles with him in yeah. the US. And, and obviously, so so uh, when we got to, skipping back a little bit, when we got into Dallas, into Strokers, so I then had my dad mm. joined us. Um, that was where he Yeah, he flew, in, he flew in the Fort Worth. Yeah, and, and a, a few more of my, my buddies turned up. Um, so that's where they tagged on. Yeah. And then and then they rode down separately to meet us into, into uh, Born Free. But... Yeah, because yeah, they did the they did rental bikes too. Yeah, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, 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 yeah. So so uh, Eagle Riders did pretty well out of us mm -hmm. because I think we probably had 10, 10 bike rentals. Yeah. You know, for, for a period of time. And Dave and Andrew had it for the longest yeah. amount of time because they ended up turning around and riding it back. To, yeah. So they 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 started in Colorado, so they did two thousand miles. Yeah, you yeah. know, whereas they in a typical you know UK set and they would only ride. So so if we if we go out on a good day, we'll do 300, 350 miles, and mm -hmm. that is a good day. And that's a, you know the longest day. Um, so to to do the mileage that we were doing and you guys do, it's the unknown to us. Well, so also not to not to shortchange your three hundred fifty miles. Three hundred fifty miles is still almost like the the time frame of us to do seven hundred yeah. miles because you guys got to go through a lot of there's yeah. a lot of towns and yeah it's it's, uh, <clears throat> it's all a lot of our riding is is through built up areas. Mm. So it's it's you know where you have intersections and, and stop signs we have traffic lights. And roundabouts. Yeah. So it's it's if you imagine a lot of the UK is kind of not like New Haven. New Haven is built up, but it's it's more like that. Yeah. Um, and you have to really go to get out on some quiet yeah. roads. But even when you're on a quiet road, I mean, you're only in the throttle for so much distance yeah. before you're backing up. Yeah. So 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 uh, uh, coming out of coming out of uh, Durango, we stopped for lunch, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, we were waiting around for Andrew and. It turns out Andrew had left with some of the other guys, so then everyone split off. So then me and Dave were on our own for a couple of hours, mm -hmm. which was great because he's my best riding buddy, you know, and that's yeah. who I've done a lot of lot of riding with. So we got to do a good few hundred miles on our own. Yeah, um, at your own pace, your own yeah, speed. I mean, well, own pace. We sat, we sat between that hundred and hundred and twenty to try and catch up with everyone, and it was great. It was like, and there's nothing on the road. Nope. Like, is it the I-40, maybe, do we get on? Yeah, I, so I-40, uh, <coughs> well, yeah, I-40 takes you through Amarillo. Yeah, so from so Amarillo, it's not I-40 when you come out of Amarillo, it's, uh, no, it was I-40. So, yeah, yeah we come to Durango. Uh, sorry, not coming out of Amarillo, going into Amarillo. So, yep, it was yeah, I-40, so, yep, going into yeah, Amarillo. So, and, and that road is just, you can see as far as you can see everywhere. Yep, um, and yeah, I it's just flat. At, yeah, at one point we were, we were coming up, so there was an on-ramp, and there was a car coming down, so we moved over to let the car come, come on. And just as the car got in front of us, the rear tire on it blew out, and it did that whole last, you know, the big lasso thing where it comes off the rim. Yeah. Come past us, and we both looked at each other and just fucking laughed and pinned it. And, and it's, you know, memories like that. Yep. Is is one of the great things that the tour has, has given me. Um, like I said, I think my my big takeaway from it was that last day when finally seeing everybody together, because obviously I'm in a truck and trailer, and me and Sax are trying to, you know, unfortunately this documentary is probably unfortunately it's probably never going to happen um i hate to say that but we've had a lot of people asking about it so we'll go ahead and, and say it now sax has had a lot of issues with uh, trying to to create it but in the making of the documentary you know me and him being in the truck we did make a lot of stops and try to film yeah. 
the bikes going by, did some drone shots. We'd be in some nature spots to, to show like a, a waterfall or. You did a pizza run. You came, you met us at one of the gas stops. I didn't do a pizza. With loads of pizzas on That was, the truck. no, we <clears throat> were at the gas station. Paul walked in and bought all those pizzas and oh, brought right, them out okay. and we just stuck oh, them on the right. truck. Uh, the only run I did for food was when we were at the last hotel. Um, I picked up Justin's wife, Rachel. Yeah. And she wanted to try an In-N-Out burger. She she's always heard about those In-N-Out burgers. You know they're big in California. They built a couple in Texas. So we went to In-N-Out. Uh, me and Rachel and uh, Sax and I bought a couple bagfuls. Right. Or actually they're in boxes. So I bought a couple of cases of them. And then when everyone was hanging out in that last hotel kind of foyer yeah. area hanging out, I just dropped all these hamburgers and cheeseburgers in front of everybody. And all the boys from California were stoked to get some In-N-Out because that's a big Cali thing. Uh, but no, the pizza was actually Paul. We ate at that one lunch yeah. spot, and it took way too long at Mexican restaurant. That was because all the FX R division boys double parked or something. Yeah, and all the cops. The, the yeah, and they were going. They were trying the, to ticket everybody. Yeah. So that lunch took way too long. So for like a dinner, everyone was still hungry, and uh, we stopped at a gas station that had a Little Caesars connected yeah. to it. And uh, so Paul bought, I don't know, like six or seven yeah. hot ready's. We ate what we could, and I think there was some. I'm not going to say they were homeless or less fortunate, but there were some other people yeah, kind of wandering the streets, and we gave them the rest of the pizza and, yeah. you know, let them go on their way. So thank you, Paul, for all that. My, Like I said, my big takeaway was when we finally seeing everybody together and then me actually watching. I remember when we pulled out of uh, Waxahachie and actually seeing just the, the train of motorcycles. And then I got a little in front of you guys and then to watch you guys all go by. And then once we get to Born Free, and, and then that's when I would say the shirts came off because – Jenny always yeah. loses his shirt. Yeah. Um, but that's where everybody was able to let their hair, hair down. Yeah. You, you completed it. You completed the ride. Um, uh, Nick from Nice by Nick, the kind of the award or the reward for yeah. building the bike was that he made custom one-off knives for everybody in the tour. Yeah. So those knives were presented. They were actually given in Dallas. Um, but pretty much if you made it to Dallas, you were going to make it the rest of the yeah. way. Uh, but once we got the Born Free, that's when everybody was able to just like, chill out it kick was back. yeah it was kickback it was a good time we were there we showed up there thursday evening or friday morning when did we get to born free friday. was it friday morning friday. yeah friday early yeah. friday morning i think born free starts on thursday but yeah. we got there friday and then there till sunday yeah. so uh the event happened it was a great turnout uh the bikes uh san diego customs had their performance show going on uh the all the fxr bikes they let them have their own like line yeah. so all the uh, attendees for Born Free Texas were able to see the bikes, look at them, um, get pictures, do whatever they need to do. The next day, you know, Sunday, we pack up, we leave. For those that don't know, Born Free Texas, uh, live music, they had food vendors, or vendors, they had a swap meet, uh, multiple d different yeah, types of bike shows. So much stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on, and it's a really cool campground. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can tent camp, which you did. And the, yeah, that time of year is, uh, is pretty ideal for tent yeah. camping. Uh, at night. It was yeah, hot it was, in the day. Yeah, it was hot in the day. I've got, but, I've got proper burn. I'm yeah. like, I mean, I'm like an aspirin normally, so like, well, I'm white as anything. And, well, the the event's actually in like a bowl, and yeah. no wind comes down in that bowl. So if you're in that bowl where all the bikes shows and the, the bands are, it gets warm. But yeah, at night, it actually yeah, cool going it, down. it drops down a little bit. So and, and not to cut you off, but you know, all that happened. Everything goes on. Born Free was a success. Um, you load up the bikes. Um, you guys did just trail both bikes. Yeah. From Texas back to yeah. Connecticut. Yeah. Uh, the mates, they just rode back to... Yeah, so uh, a few of them went off to Denver because they had to drop their bikes back there. Uh, and then my dad and stuff went into Dallas. Maybe, I think they flew out of Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. So they had to take their bikes somewhere else. And then uh, my friend Aaron, he flew back. He got like three planes to get back to... Yeah, Denver. America, they, it's weird. Uh, the, all the hops that you have to yeah. take sometimes to get to a certain was, destination. If it had driven back with us, it would have been another two days. Mm. So just for him to come here and then fly back to the UK. So it's like, look, we'll drop you at an airport. You can fly from there to Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, Dallas to JFK and the JFK home. Okay. So, so he was back two days earlier. Than, yeah. Because you know, he's got a job. And, oh, yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. And he was on it for the whole week. Yeah, the week. whole time. Uh, yeah, yeah, or actually yeah. before that. So if you guys left out on Wednesday, that's Sunday. That's a week and a half. Yeah. So, so he got here on the he got here on the Monday. Uh, so that was the other thing. Um, you know, I was building this. Mm -hmm. I was going to get them from the airport, and you know, there was a lot going, a lot of moving parts. Yeah, this thing uh, still wasn't completed, and no, he's rolling in. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I had to go and pick up a trailer. We had to go up to the dealership to sort out what was I sorting out? Oh, to get it cut and buff because mm -hmm. um, it hadn't been literally. When I took it out, I took it out of the booth, 
and it was like, right, be careful with it because it's still still soft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's um, beautiful. Which you're, this is the bike you're taking. So if you're at the FXR jam or if you if you attended the jam, uh, you're going to be rolling out to the jam officially tomorrow. You will yeah. ride with us. We're going to. Yeah. Um, I'm going to drop a video of. Uh, my ride with Coley from basically for me from Arkansas, him from Georgia. We met in Virginia, our ride through Washington into New York uh, and then making it to New Haven. And then the East Coast Jam for the uh, Thursday of East Coast Jam, which is when everyone kind of, I would say Stops, half the crew starts rolling in. in yeah, I know yeah. Chris and those guys will be in. Uh, I'm going to unfortunately have to leave and then I'm going to do a second part video leaving the jam. I'm going to make it over to uh, Niagara Falls falls down to that event in Kentucky that me and Justin's been kind of really promoting a lot and uh and then that'll be its own video but this video will be out before all those so uh, definitely stay tuned for all that stuff one of those cheap little uh YouTube plugs that I uh <laughs> so graciously put in there but um this bike if you're at the jam this bike will definitely be there hopefully you got a good look at it if you're at the jam and you walk around and you really saw the details because you know between the external resi you don't see this on FXRs. Right. You don't right. see an open belt primary on a twin cam right. with mid controls mid -control. yeah. on an FXR. Um, this thing has a 49 mil front end. So the front end is off of a newer 06 and up Dyna. It's got uh, different trees. Those are the Paul's yeah. trees. Yeah. Yeah. So Paul's trees, Paul's modularizers, yeah. They're, uh, all the modal gadget stuff. This bike has a ton of details, a ton of work. You probably can't even see them, but here's the tail lights. I mean, it's just a lot of stuff. Uh, so. Keyless. Yeah, it's got the key fob. It's a uh, throttle by wire, which the only dynos to be throttle by wire were the lowrider S's in 2016, 2017. So, which had he done throttle cables, he would have rode this bike on the FXR yeah. tour and yeah, exactly. would have never had no problem. So sometimes there's something to be safe for uh, yeah. for old for old technology. Which, but uh, Joe Kid actually um, beat your ball. We've, got, we've, got, a, yeah, we've yeah. got a little thing about that, which is quite good. I mean, it's cool that you um, did what you did. Yeah. You know, a twin cam with with throttle by wire, kind of give it the bagger you know life but beautiful wheels like i said dual brake caliper on the one side a lot of this stuff um, he's shown us the drawings i mean it's stuff that he fabricated he drew up if he didn't actually physically make it he 100 percent came up with like the plans yeah, the drawings and, and then and you handed it to a yeah. machinist to make so yeah. um, a lot of great detail in this thing i love this bike um i think the only thing i would probably change about it is uh i'd park it in my garage <laughs> it'd be in my garage so yeah, I appreciate um, that. but so now that the tour's over, the bike's running great. You're going to be at the jam with this thing. Yeah. Uh, what what has the FXR tour opened up for you? Like, what what did you get from it? And then what what's making you want to go through all that so headache it's, again? It's the people. It's the people. I mean, the bike is the FXR for me. It's the best bike that I know. Everyone says it. You know? Everyone. It's the best Harley that was ever made. Yeah. And, and it is. It really is because it it handles really well. Uh, even in stock form, it just mm. rides nice, you know. And then it's it, you can go so many different ways with it. You know? yep. No one has, no one's got a stock Harley. Even even the guy with all the screaming eagle and the, and the I don't know my peach, my peach one's pretty stock right now. Yeah, but it might have like a dark. It does have, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got there's things. no two the same. Yeah, there's no two the same. And and it's but the biggest thing with the FXR is the community mm -hmm. that goes with it. I agree. And and that's worldwide. That's that's you know there's a there's a there's not a big FXR community in the UK, but the community that's there mm. is strong, and it's the same as like the like the FXR Alpha page and all that sort of yeah. stuff. You know, we've got that sort of thing, and we've got people, you know, um, and I think uh, uh, you know, and across Europe as well, the FXR is. I mean, the the, the Dutch have loved the FXR for ages. Mm. They've been running FXR chops for a long, long time. Uh, J J um, uh, Japan, the FXRs yeah. in Japan are yeah. insane. Um, yeah. It's, it's amazing what they're doing with them so out there. It, so it's the people. It's the it's the and that's what you know. At the end of the day, the, the that's what keeps you coming back to the bike. The, the bike scene is the people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, bikes and trends come and go. I'll agree. The people in the FXR community, because this is no stab at the the performance bagger or the soft tail, but uh, you know, I feel like a lot of those those bikes are built with money. Yeah. A lot of this is built with ingenuity yeah. and maybe some old parts or some. You know, me and Coley are probably a perfect example that the bikes are pretty stockish looking, yeah. but they have a lot of purpose built parts on there. And we're not trying to, you know, flex a, a wallet or whatever. No. We still, I still have less in my bike than what a brand new sports would cost. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, but it's a beautiful bike and I'm, I'm very happy with it. But I feel like the bagger performance stuff, there's a lot of, sometimes egos in it. Yeah. And I've noticed the FXR community doesn't have that. No. And uh, Coley is a perfect example. 
um, at the fact that I didn't. I we've only met through having yeah. FXRs on the internet. And we've ridden over a thousand miles together since we got to this point. Over a thousand miles, we've slept in the same hotel at every stop. Yeah. I didn't know if he's going to slip my throat or. Oh, you know, well, that's, that's, yeah. uh, I nearly joked to you actually yesterday when uh, uh, when you said, "Oh, Cody's going to get a hotel," and I was like, "No, he can stay. He, he can stay at mine." He has yeah. And then I thought I should say, as long as he's not a serial killer. Yeah. Right? Well, and I told oh, Cody that too. I said, "Hey, uh, I only know you from the FXR yeah, tour, yeah. and we've been talking a lot since then." But you invited me into your home, and I said, hey, I'm not the type. I already get weird when people, because I, I told you I wanted a yeah. hotel of my own. You're like, no, 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 you're going to stay with me, I insist. And uh, I told Coley, I was like, hey, man, like I don't want to be that guy to no, invite you. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. That was, exactly. Really uncomfortable yeah. until nice. I it's... got to the mattress in there. That was very comfortable. <laughs> so. I ran out of uh, memory on that card. Oh, well. Um, so I guess we'll just pick it up. Off. We'll finish off on this camera. So... Uh, deny the fact that the community yeah. itself really is what drives these motorcycles. Well, well the fact we're going to the FXR jam, yep. you know, it's, it's an event just for FXRs. Yeah, I mean, me okay. riding across America, I'm, I'm, I'm just over 1,300 miles on it, and at some of the gas stops, they'll be like, you know, they'll talk to us, well, what are you guys doing? Oh, we're riding to New York. New York? When do you got to be there? Well, we got to be there in a day, another day or whatever. And they're like, man, you're, why? why? Well, this type of motorcycle, we're, we're going to go hang out with guys that have this same style of motorcycle. Well, and, and look at, so yesterday we went to New Haven mm -hmm. and met Paulie Drax. He right? shows up on one. Who and... is an FXR guy on an absolute piece of an FXR. Perfect, you know? and, and he, you know, he come out because he was stoked to meet you guys because mm -hmm. he'd seen you riding from, you know. From Arkansas, like, from Georgia. Yeah, yeah so. Um, and um, that's, and that's, that's what the community is. They, you know, people come out for, for stuff like that. Yeah. So, the friendships and everything you built, like I said, you're building another one. Yeah. Um, not as crazy as this, but no. you still are starting. We're, we're at, we're in, what month are we in? We're almost in June. End of May. Yeah, so End of May. Yeah, happy yeah. birthday, by the way. So, you guys in the comments can, can leave him a happy birthday. Uh, but he's got a bike. Look at the state it's in. The motor is, there's a crank over there. There's just the, the cases are still apart. Or not cases apart, but the top ends off of it. You still got a lot of work, and yep. you're about to put yourself through all the same mess you did on this. Yep. Is it worth it? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. 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 So because so this one, the plan with this one is I'm going to ride from. So I don't know how it works, but uh, where it starts in St. Louis this mm -hmm. year. So I'm sorry, it's going to start just outside of St. Louis yeah. at Bare Knuckles dealership. That's only a thousand miles from here. Yeah. You know, a thousand miles. So two thousand three hundred miles last year. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna ride. So the plan is I'm gonna ride this to St. Louis, mm. jump on the tour, do the tour, and then I'll probably I'll do Born Free for like a night maybe, or you know, and then work my way back. Okay. Just because of the you know October coming back to Connecticut mm. in October can be you know Little, I don't want it. Yeah. yeah yeah yeah. So and also I'll still be I don't know like I'll still be into two weeks on the road really. Yeah. By the time I've two days or a long day from here to St. Louis. I think the ride's four days this time. Is that right? It's, it's the same it's, the same amount of riding. We got right. the same stop. So we're doing three hotel stops before we get to yeah. uh, Dallas. And uh, basically yeah. the same, but the mileage is almost perfectly 250 miles right. each day. So Which will it, make it for nice, nice ride. Nice ride. Uh, sure. I'm am, I am actually I'm really looking forward to getting into Paul's shop mm -hmm. and to Frank's shop. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to Frank's shop. is supposed to be another one of yeah. those amazing shops. I mean, yeah. he, he machines more than just Harley parts, so yeah. it's supposed to be a huge, huge uh, yeah. thing. Yeah, so again, if, if you, you don't have to be a builder to get in on the tour, yeah. you know, come and ride. Yep, yep. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, anybody anybody can join. Anybody can be a part of it. You don't have to have an FXR, and you don't have to be a builder or know a builder to jump in on any point of the ride and uh, and be a part of it. You just yeah. you just need to just, just be a likable person, I would say, yeah, first yeah, and yeah. foremost. Be a likable yeah. person. And uh, be a safe rider. I, we love the guys up here, the stunt riders. And you talked about it. Like maybe next year, it'd be kind of cool to get a stunt rider on the yeah, tour. Totally different perspective, isn't it? It'd be crazy to see someone just really in a thousand miles. Especially, but. especially like if uh, one of these coasting boys could, because uh, they're 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 a couple of bikes that they've built over winter. Actually, yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah, you know, I got to see uh, Paulie's son, Paulie. Um, I saw his bike a couple of weeks ago, and it's not you know a stunt bike's normally a little yep. bit. But that thing's nice. Yeah, they're it actually starting nice. to put some nice pieces yeah. together. Um, so may, you never know. Maybe, maybe if enough of you guys want it, and next year's bill, we'll, we'll try to yeah. push them to. Like a different crowd and a different 
a vibe to it and all that. But either way, um, you don't need to come and try to impress us with burnouts or anything like that. Just show up, you know, be a likable person, uh, ride, and you never know if uh, if this is something that you're interested in and you did make some good connections next year when the uh, the garage builder gets announced again. Yeah. Maybe you could just be like just like Dave and and yeah. because of your past experiences with everybody, everybody's like, I know that guy, I know what he's capable of, I like him, I like what he does. Um, you, you never know. So uh, either way, we, we're looking forward to it. I think the dates were, uh, the FXR tour itself kicks off on the 13th, yeah. October 13th in Troy, Missouri. That's where uh, uh, Paul's shop's at. Um, and then like I said, we're gonna go from uh, Paul's shop to Joplin, Missouri, which is where Speed Dealer Frank's shop is at. Stay there for the night. The next morning we'll get up go from there to Hot Springs, Arkansas. There's really no shop there. It's just a, a really nice town with a little bit of history. Uh, they got a couple cool little bars and restaurants and things like that. So it should be a good time with motorcycles. And then we're gonna do Strokers again, just like last year, and then Strokers over to um, Yellow Rose Canyon, which is where the actual event is. So uh, October 13th, I think is the Sunday or Monday, and then it ends on October 19th or whatever the, the end of Born yeah. Free is. Um, you'll be able to find out more information, obviously following myself, Justin on Instagram, maybe, I think we need to do something on Facebook, maybe I'll post on like the Formers Bagger page or FXR Alpha, uh, let them kind of put a couple posts up, but for the most part, most of the information you'll get is on Instagram and then right here on YouTube, and uh, we're definitely about to start putting out some real videos, real content from it, but we wanted to do more of these videos, and uh, I'm trying to get some ideas together. I'm gonna try to put together a, a collage of videos, maybe have the builders send me some stuff, and yeah. so you guys can get to meet them, but um, I'm going to put in the description below, I'll put all the builders Instagram uh, tags, if you if you will, go on there, give them a follow. Like I said, over the next couple, about a month and a half or so, you're really going to start seeing a lot of Friday updates. So, yeah, it will start, pick, uh, it will start picking up now. Yeah, it will start picking up. Um, once California is over, once Born Free California is over and then the Born Free organization or page, whatever you want to call it, starts pushing the Texas event, we piggyback off that because that's what we're... Yeah were uh gearing towards just born free texas so it's a it's a cool event i encourage everybody to 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 attend it you know what i mean obviously events like this uh are only successful if the public yeah get behind it get behind it and uh following the builders sharing their builds on your stories it, it, it takes nothing to hit the share button but i'm, I'm stoked at what people are doing and uh it, so so on that note whose build do you like this year so far well if I had to be honest, uh, looking at where the builds are at, um, when you talk to Chris from Saddleman, that bike is going to be incredible. But he, uh, if you don't know, Saddleman's a huge, their involvement in the Bagger Racing League, sorry, or actually Kings of the Bagger, yeah. Bagger, yeah, whatever it's called, um, their season should be coming, winding down around June or July, right. and then he's going to go full swing on that bike. So he doesn't have a lot done to it. Speed Merchant, same thing with them. Uh, they're in the heat of their show, you know, yeah. season. Um, but I have full confidence, and Justin does too, that they're going to really pump out a bike. So I don't know what their bikes, the guts of them look like. But obviously Dennis has done the most amount of work and yeah. really showcases <clears throat> where he's, he's at with his bike. He's quite, uh, he's he's quite far ahead. Yeah. Um, but I think he'll probably slow down a little bit when it comes to you know the paint and stuff. That's mm. gonna. That's, he, yeah, he's gonna hold it up. Yeah, he's got himself in a good position. Yeah. I think to. Uh, to, to get some test miles on his mm. bike. He's gonna be done a little bit earlier than... Yeah, um, but to go back to the question, Suicide Kings Chris, uh, obviously the bike he's building is more of a, um, you know, your traditional yeah. club style bike. And uh, it's gonna be a very, it's gonna be a bike that will appeal to me because it, it'll probably be set up like a rider. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it's gonna be very clean. Yeah, it's gonna be it's clean, clean and, and, and to the point. Sanitary. Uh, the John Innovation, Metal Innovations, it looks like because he's getting a frame jig, so obviously he's doing some framework on his. So I'm curious to see, is he going up and out? I mean, I think he talked about it a little bit, but it was hard to really picture what he was saying, yeah. looking at everything. So I'm really uh, interested in seeing what he does because his builds are all incredible. And he's not a very uh, lifted to the sky kind of guy. So no. he, he does those low and mean and being... You know, more like, a, more like a pro street. Yeah, exactly. Of, uh, and, and me being kind of like really into like the 90s style motorcycles growing up and stuff, I, I like that look still. Yeah. Even yeah. though my bike's lifted and, and all that, I still like the, you yeah. know, just like this this yeah. FXR that you can't see behind us over here that you borrowed, yeah, you know, the from the shop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that bike's got a real cool stance yeah. to it. And uh, But I, to be honest with you, from what I've seen 
uh, in, in clean moto again with those guys. They're they're, they, they're quite well into it. They're they, quite yeah. They they've got yeah. The, they're they're going in the right mo uh, direction as well. But I think Chuck uh, make choppers not yeah. friends. I think it's his name out of Colorado. His um, he's doing some stuff to it that I'm really stoked on, and I don't want to give away all his secrets, but uh, he's doing the Pan Am wheels on it. Right. So he cut the fender and and oh yeah, I saw that actually. Yeah, he did yeah, a wide yeah, glide, yeah. Uh, uh, late 2000s <clears throat> wide glide fender and narrowed it because those bikes came with a one or 200 or 180 tire. So he shortened it a little bit to fit between the rails of an FXR frame that he did yeah. still have to modify, but he's got those spoke wheels on it and he's got a. It's going to be that 90s bad boy look. Yeah. It's going to have the seat for it. He's got a very, um, he doesn't want no one to know about it because he's sharing it in the group chat, but he's got a very... Uh, well, just the, 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 so for me with his bike, just the amount of work he had to do to get his engine and trans in it. Yep. It's a twin cam B. Right? Yep. So yeah, it's, it's a soft tail yeah. motor set up. And I, he, I wasn't sure that it was going to go. Uh, Dave is in the same boat. I think Dave's yeah, M8 is a soft tail. And yeah, when he bought it, he thought it was supposed to be a Torin. Yeah. It showed up, and he's like, "Well, I guess it's uh, yeah. I guess we're going a different it. direction. It'll, we'll, it'll, it'll get it done. Yeah, we'll make but. it work, but um, because at some of these points, it's like you can roll the dice and try, but really it comes down to money. You know, when you spend three, four thousand dollars on a crate motor and trans, and it shows up and it's not what it was supposed to be, or maybe you misread the listing, yeah. it's hard to shell out another three to four thousand dollars when you still got a whole yeah. bike to build. Oh, so awesome. I'm gonna be excited to see what that looks like. But right now, I think Chuck Chuck's bike is kind of a, Looking at it, it's something I can relate to because he's yeah. a, he's a chopper guy, he's an FXR guy, and he's kind of merging the, the two, but not doing like a, a chopper chopper. It's going to yeah. be like that tough '90s yeah. chopper, yeah. you know, the the low bars and the just that real mean stance um, bike, and then with the spokes, traditional metal spokes. But if you don't know the Pan Am, yeah, they're externally they're yeah, externally yeah. threaded, so they're still tubeless tires, so you don't have to worry about all that. So it's got a, a really cool look, but. Uh, right now, his bike and Dennis, obviously, because you yeah. can actually see where Dennis is going with it. He's yeah. doing a lot of. He's he's uh, he's so he's gone way above my level on what he's done with his. Like I've done the turn signals and everything mm. and keyless and you know and he's gone. He's got GPS. Yeah, you know he's and, like the uh, next. Yeah, step. so he's he's gone a bit further with yeah. him, which uh, which is which is you know it'd be nice to see. Yeah. What, uh, what that comes out like, and then Mikey's uh, from. Oh yeah, I forgot Mikey. Nine finger. Fan, nine finger. Uh, he's yeah, doing awesome. another MA swap, and uh, I just he just posted up in the group chat. He was able because he's machining everything, his yeah. mounts and all. He had to do the least amount of cutting on the frame to get an M8 to work, and still have plenty of clearance. Right. Uh, I'll have to show you a picture of it, and uh, it is super clean, like yeah. the mainly in the front motor mount. But uh, so he's he's going to be another one of those guys that that bike is going to have details that the average person will never notice. The, the, the amount of metal work that's going into it, fabrication, and to the average person, once it's painted or power coated, it gets yeah, lost. It yeah. Right so, uh, yeah, Mikey's going to be another one of those bikes that uh, is going to be very exciting to start watching in the in the months to come. Yeah. The updates because uh, those guys, Paul's Paul's FXR updates are probably some of the best FXR updates last year. Yeah. Even though you know the bike unfortunately you know wasn't finished, but they were. Every Friday they, they posted and they were funny with some yeah. of them and they were, you know, really kind of uh, painting a picture. I don't know if you remember the first one where they just like hacked the bike up and just like threw yeah, this. Yeah, everywhere. And uh, what was it, like the steering neck or a bung or something like that? They threw it in the lathe. He just threw it in there, closed the door, opened it up, and he already had yeah, the part like, machined. Oh, no, yeah. And he picks it up and then yeah. he throws it to his son and his son starts polishing it yeah. and throws it to Mikey. And Mikey, and I was like, stuff like that. It's, it's quirky, but they're having fun with it. You know what I mean? They're not taking it so, so serious. And uh, that's why I really hope that these guys start getting on board with uh, the, the builders for this year yeah. in the in the months to come, or in the weeks they, to come, really. I, I hope by the end of June they really start. They'll start to find their motive. Not, not that they haven't got their motivation yet, yeah, yeah. But, that, but you know something will happen and it will just give them a little lift. Exactly. Yeah, it's, yep, yep. It's, uh, it's, it's the, but the group chat's where it's at because you see everything a lot longer mm -hmm. in advance than, than anyone else. Yep, yep. So, and that can give you a real, a real little buzz. Yeah, a real outlook on kind of where everybody's at and it, it boosts you yeah. because of where they're at on their bike, you're like, oh, well, I need to step it up. And then yeah. that week leading up to your update, you're, you might push a little harder because you saw what someone's already doing on Monday yeah. to get something done for Friday. Yeah, but uh, 
So anyways, I think we're going to wrap it up right here. We're going to head to uh, Massachusetts. You're going to ride with us yeah. to Mass. I'm going to go stop by and see my grandfather's old house that I haven't seen in, I don't know how long, 20, 30 years. Uh, I'm going to stop by there and go see it, and then we're going to uh, keep riding to the East Coast Jam. And uh, unfortunately, I won't get to see you there, but I'll see you hopefully, if I don't see you before then, hopefully in St. Louis. Yeah, definitely. And uh, we'll, definitely. we'll do the tour all over again. And this time, you'll be on a bike, I'll be on a bike, yeah. I'm not going to be in a truck, and uh, we'll have a lot of fun. So thank you for the hospitality again. Thank you for doing this for everybody online. Yeah, no problem. And it's, been, uh, it's, it's been good to be able to try and share a little bit of my experience of the tour because it's, it's really... Uh, it's helped me find my feet in the mm. US really quickly. But yeah, I've still not been here two years yet. Yeah, yeah. Your 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 followers and everything it definitely yeah. did put you to a different level, and you got definitely more people on board. And then uh, with that, it opens the doors for more opportunities. Yeah. You know, people yeah. definitely want to get you out to more events. And uh, so we'll be at Fuel in Cleveland actually mm -hmm. with both bikes. Okay, we'll and that's there. in uh, that's the end of July. End of July, okay. Yeah. And is there any other events that you're going to be? Uh, so I'm going kind to of do the Brooklyn block. Oh, party. anywhere. That's in yeah, September. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm sure there's others. Yeah, I'm sure there'll others. be something else. Just yeah. follow them on the Instagram again. Unit Six Customs. Stay peeled on that, if you yeah. will. Yeah. So, all right. Well, shake your hand man. again. Appreciate yeah. it, and let's uh, let's get these bikes loaded up and head on out. Let's go. Appreciate it.